Hi, and welcome to this third video in this Lambda introduction series. Today we will get to know how Lambda functions can communicate with a DynamoDB table. Let's say we want to create an application that can store records of different types of birds. I will make use of the AWS console for all the resource configuration and writing the Lambda function code. For this demo, we need to create three resources. We need a DynamoDB table, a Lambda function, and an IAM role with read and write access to the DynamoDB table. Let's start by creating the DynamoDB table. Open the AWS console and navigate to DynamoDB. Hit Create Table. Give the table a name, let's say Awesome Birds. Provide a partition key named ID. Since DynamoDB is a NoSQL database, I don't need to define all the attributes that I will use later on. For the sake of this demo, I will just go along with all the default settings. Now that we have created the DynamoDB table, we need a Lambda function that can communicate with this table. Navigate to Lambda. I will make use of the Lambda function that I created in the previous video. If you haven't already watched that video, just go ahead and do so before you continue with this one. Let's just start by deleting everything that we don't need. At the top of this file, import the Boto3 SDK. We also need two variables, one for the DynamoDB table name and one for the AWS region where the awesome birds table is. When we make a request to this Lambda function, the data we provide will be accessible through the event parameter in the Lambda handler function. To communicate with DynamoDB, we will make use of the Bodo3 SDK. Bodo3 is a Python SDK used for communicating with all sorts of AWS services. Let's define a variable for DynamoDB and use Bodo3.resource, provide the AWS service name, in this case DynamoDB, and the region. Now let's use the DynamoDB variable to access our table like this. Table equals DynamoDB.table and provide the table name. To store an item in the DynamoDB table, we can call put item on the table object. This method takes one parameter, the item we want to store. Let's say we also want to return the object we just stored in the DynamoDB table. To do this, we can call getItem on the table object. This method requires one parameter, key, with a JSON formatted value like this. First, provide the name of the partition key, in this case ID, then the value, which is the ID inside of the event object. Lastly, return the item inside of the response object like this. Now that the Lambda function is done, we also have to update the IAM role that this Lambda function uses to execute. The reason for this is that the IAM role don't have access to the DynamoDB table. To fix this, go over to the IAM service and locate the role for our Lambda function. Open the role and hit Attach Policies. And now we have to create a new policy what we will do now is to create a new policy that has access to read and write from our DynamoDB table. And of course, attach the policy to the IAM role. So let's choose the correct AWS service, DynamoDB. And the actions we need are get item and put item. We also need to specify the exact table that we need access to. Now we need the ARN of our DynamoDB table. This can be found under the details page of our DynamoDB table. Now hit next, give the policy a name and hit create policy. Let's attach the new policy to our IAM role.
the Lambda function should now have access to our DynamoDB table. So let's test it. Go back to the Lambda function. and create a new test object. Now we need to define a JSON object for our bird. I'll provide three parameters, ID, name, and can fly, a boolean for if it can fly or not. So let's see if we can store our eagle inside our DynamoDB table. Now hit test. The output says everything went fine, but uh, let's see if the bird actually got stored in the DynamoDB table. As you can see, the bird was successfully stored. Now we have created a Lambda function that can communicate with a DynamoDB table. In the next video, we will start to learn about Lambda triggers, because we can't depend on the test button every time we want to run a Lambda function. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And to learn more about Lambda functions, remember to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish more content.